Welcome to Off Grid Ireland podcast. In this episode, we're speaking to the legendary John Waters. John is an author, social commentator, and linguistical genius. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to su- to support us, you can do so by liking, sharing, and subscribing, or even referring our podcast to friends and family. If you'd like to support us financially, you can do so at the links below the Buy Me a Coffee. Please also don't forget to subscribe here as we've been struck on YouTube a few times. Thank you very much. Uh, cool. Hello. Yep, we're ready to go. Off Good yes. Ireland is delighted to welcome back our good friend to the channel, Mr. John Waters. John is an author, a journalist, social and political commentator, civilizationist, constituentist. Tonight we're going to be exploring the topics where we are now in the troop movement and we'll be offering solutions to possibly engage the masses that are finally starting to notice things are not all that it seems to be here in Ireland. Welcome to Off Good Ireland, John. We're delighted to have you back. Thanks very much, Gavin. Thank you. Great to have you. Um, the modern moment in time is always seen as civilization's most cleverest. I tend to disagree with this statement. Reflecting back to 1989 in the Czech Velvet Revolution, um, can you speak some so, around that topic, uh, John, around this the, the Czech Colour Revolution and, and your thoughts and how? Oh yeah, it might be where it's relevant to Ireland. I mean, well, I've I've been saying this consistently. I think for for the last couple of years uh, that you know, because Gavin, because what I try to do in this situation is try to imagine how it might play out because it's it's by no means clear and it, the situation we're in is is completely unprecedented it's not comparable even to that situation that you described uh, Czechoslovakia 89 because th- there was a certain conventionality about that uh, there were there was a, a, a very serious kind of uh, resistance movement there was some degree of resistance, uh, uh, not media, but uh, communications like, uh, 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 you know, books, underground books and, you know, underground networks and so on, theatre and so on. Uh, so it was well advanced. I and mean, you're talking about, you know, many, many decades of, of, of preparation and work and, 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 and fighting back. So we're in a, in a very strange situation where you have a complete, a total capture of our institutions. Of states, the 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 government, the the parliament, the Iraqis, uh, uh, the the courts, uh, the media, uh, the police, uh, and so on. So you, then you say, well, because uh, there is a tendency, I think, uh, in people naturally, to kind of feel that, well, when the truth emerges, uh, everything will be okay, everything will fall into place, that so that the authorities will move to take action. The problem with that, or one of the problems with that, is that, well, first of all, it's going to be hard to get the message out because of corruption in the media. But even if you could do that, then you're up with the problem. The, the problem is that the authorities are up to their necks in all this. They're not any longer the authorities. They have no moral authority whatsoever. So we need to kind of think about how it would be that we would reclaim our country in situation in a peaceful manner, in a manner where the truth had begun to emerge uh, the establishment was on the run. They were no longer able to cover up their crimes. And, well, how would that play out? And I, you know, I, 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 the reason I talk about Czechoslovakia 89 is that that was a, a, a revolution that happened uh, really kind of, they call it the Velvet Revolution for precisely this reason. It was, uh, you know, a, a revolution that happened uh, through people power, where people just came onto the streets peacefully. And, 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 and stood in the square with their lighted candles in front of the balcony and, uh, at uh, the town hall. And, and uh, their, their, their president to be, as it turned out, uh, Václav Havel, came onto the balcony and spoke to them. And, and uh, it was quite different to what you're seeing now in our situation. Uh, I, and it troubles me a little bit, I did, you see, because I've been saying for the last couple of years that Whereas it's important to get people out to make to make their presence and their feelings known, you you don't want that to be the, you know there's a number of problems. First of all, uh, all kinds of demonstrations that we've had uh, have been infiltrated, uh, or they've been subject to counter demonstrations. The purpose of which is to create conflict that will result in some form of violence or some kind of outbreaks of of, of you know uh, roughhousing or you know whatever like that. It's not. 
and that's not uh, at the dictation of the resistance. You know, you can't control that because they're the the job of Antifa. They're paid, you know, uh, uh, agent provocateurs, and, and and they're there. They're being paid well to be there uh, and to create conflict so that they they can discredit the resistance. Uh, that's a, a huge problem. There's also the problem of infiltration of of the number of the the protests themselves, whereby you have people who create uh, friction for the sake of, you know, uh, giving headlines to the press. And we've seen some instances of that recently emerging, you know, uh, uh, that the, 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 paper, the press are tipped off and they're there, they're waiting for the occasion where there'll be a bit of a disruption, somebody will be arrested or whatever, and then they'll have their story. And their story will not be about the content of the protest or the, the feelings of the people. It'll be about the fact that a far-right demonstrator protester was arrested. That, so this is, these are kind of things that have make this very different different to what we've been seeing in, in and, and, and so what I say therefore is that we need to get the people themselves onto the streets but in a peaceable way now I we're going way back I tried a few good few times to try to persuade people that uh, on our side that what we needed was a different form of protest not a protest goes out shouting and roaring at people or you know banging things or you know you know but one that people would you know, walk onto the, into a certain place, stand quietly in front of it in, in significant numbers. Uh, the, the, the idea was based on something that happened initially way back in the, about seven or eight years ago. At the time, they were introducing what by, was ironically a very mild form of civil unions. I mean, they, there was, they didn't get, get anywhere near the form of gay marriage that we have. And they were, you know, there was protests about that. And people would just stand there reading a book, each one. Almost like spaced out, you know, maybe ironically, you know, social distancing, something like six foot apart, something like that. And and, uh, and I think the power of that was enormous because it wasn't confrontational. It wasn't noisy. It was, it was quiet. And it was chilling, I think, for the authorities to see that, to see that power, you know, the power of the powerless, as Haber called it. You know, that, and I think that that's the way we should be thinking. You know, uh, in this now, I think uh, having said a lot of that, I mean, I, you know, I think there's been a, a number of moments in the last few months that have been very significant. You know, the the resistance that has developed against, you know, the the, the mass plantation of Ireland, you know, the the neo colonization of Ireland, uh, that has been very significant, particularly in certain working class communities, East Wall and Dublin, uh, Ballymun, you know, Fermoy, uh, Mullingar, etc. So, you know, so it's it's. That's, you know, that has a lot to, to, to be said for it. It shows that there's a willingness, certainly in certain sectors of the community, to resist this. Similarly, I think even more recently, there has been a, a, a very good resistance to the trans uh, agenda and the LGBT agenda in general, the drag queen story time agenda, the, the imposition of basically filth on the children of our nation uh, in schools compulsorily, you know, force where they're force fed pornography and all kinds of, you know, things that they shouldn't have to deal with for perhaps the best part of another decade, you know, in their lives. And, and uh, you know, I, I've seen very spirited speeches by people on that, and that's very encouraging. But I, I do think, you see, I've, I've been saying for the last year that the authorities want conflict. They need conflict on, when, a, when a protest happens. They need it to be rough and they need to have some arrest or something like that so they can discredit it. And it seems to me that, that some thought has to be given to finding ways around that, to, to defeat that tactic of the authorities. Uh, and so uh, that's why I, I talk about Czechoslovakia 89, because it was such a beautiful occasion, you know, that a million people literally, like within, a, within an hour or two, when the word went around the city, by word of mouth of Prague, you know, they came onto the streets into Winchester Square and stood there with lighted candles. And that was the start. That, and essentially, within days, the government had basically run away. And that's, I think, the way that we, we need, this needs to happen. Now, it is different on other levels. You know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that we need to be aware of. You know, the fact that our country is captured in totality. You know, we are run by the American deep state. And that means not just that they're operation on the ground in all kinds of sinister ways, but that their thought processes are being imposed on Ireland. You know, they, what we're working with 
in that context is not an Irish model at all. It's an American model. So you're, that's where you, why you hear all this talk about the far right and uh, white supremacy and all this stuff, which have no place in the Irish cultural firmament whatsoever. But that that comes from them because they, that comes from a a schema that, that rolled out in America for about 2016, in the last days of the Obama regime, when when they would be clear, when play, Trump had had won the election. And they were dismayed by this, and they put in place tr- uh, measures to try to combat, and uh, and in a sense to discredit in advance uh, people who who voted for Trump. And uh, they used these concepts of disinformation, misinformation, uh, to, to and, and the domestic terrorism to basically depict anybody who didn't agree with the establishment, the American establishment, which is the elite, the Democratic Party, and so the deep state. Anybody who disagreed with them was to be deemed a domestic terrorist. Anyone who voted for Donald Trump, anybody who supported Donald Trump. And they set up, uh, you know, psyop after psyop. We've seen it in the January 6th thing. I mean, that's the greatest hoax, uh, you know, uh, uh, we've, in, in political terms in, in, in recent times in the world. You know, that, but pe- this became like a, a, an article of faith by the media around the world, including in Ireland, that this was, had been a form of coup, which is nonsense. And I mean, the video footage shows that it was nothing like that. So these kind of tactics are being used in our country. People need to see that. They, they, what we're dealing with now is nothing like the country we grew up in. We're not dealing with anything like the political system we grew up in. In a, in a certain sense, I would question whether it's worthwhile to engage with the political system at all, because I, I believe that given what's happened in the last three years, the political system needs to come down in its totality and to be rebuilt in true democratic form, whereby you would have the possibility for people of all uh, viewpoints to enter into the political s- system and debate their points of view in an f- open and free way. Uh, which isn't possible now. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, the par- parties who are involved in the suspension of the constitution, the confiscation of rights, the terrorizing, the terrorizing of the public, uh, the corruption of the police force and the judiciary and the, the media, all these people, I don't think they can be permitted to participate in political life in this country again. But again, we go back to what I said at the beginning, how, who is the we that will manage to put in place the structures to ensure that that happens or doesn't happen. Uh, that's the question. And so it's about like, who are the we, given that the authorities are no longer on the side of the people, that the, the authorities are at war, have been at war with the people for three years. And we therefore need an entirely different way of thinking about all of this. Uh, and that's, so I, I suppose what I'm saying in some ways that the approach has been for more or less the traditional one. You, know, you protest against the government and you ask the government to, to reform itself, to make changes, to, do, to, to, to respond to the will of people. Will the people. You can see quite clearly that that's not happening. The government has no interest in responding to the will of the people because it doesn't recognise the people anymore because it is following that American model whereby only the elite and its supporters count for anything. So these are things that we need to absorb to understand the dynamics of the situation we're in and how they've changed before we can really make any progress beyond, you know, a slow incremental uh, series of gains that we could take years if we had years to actually reach the point where they would have a real effect. Yeah, um, so you hit some really good points. Um, I wanted to ask you about what do you think in relation to language and stuff that's being used? Because the linguistics, like they, like you, you touched on it there, like they, they try and put everyone under the band of a far right or whatever else. Is there any idea that we could repurpose our like our language in, in our rebuttals and, you know, in our online discourse and stuff to uh, take the window of some of their, their dog whistles? Well, I, I, I don't think there's any uh, straightforward way uh, about it. I think it's a matter of telling the truth. And it's a matter of trying to formulate our thoughts more clearly uh, with a view to fighting the propaganda that they're uh, using against us. I mean, I'll give you an example. You know, there's a trope, which uh, kind of a, a, a response that immediately kicks in when anything, when anybody's in action, throws around an accusation or an implication or an innuendo about racism, right? Now, the, the, their response is, oh, well, I'm not a racist, but, you know? Now, People need to understand that this is a complete, this is a tactic they use, which is an import from America. It's a demonization tactic. 
Uh, it has nothing to do with the history of Ireland. It has nothing to do with Irish culture. And it certainly has nothing to do with what's happening because what's happening here is that uh, 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 external entities are being enforced on, on Irish people uh, in the form of a neo-colonialist project. And it really doesn't matter to the Irish people the natives of this country, whether they're, they're, they're invaders, what colour their invaders' faces are. It's still an invasion. So racism has nothing to do with this. The only racism that's going on here, if you want to even think about this, is against Ireland and against Irish people and their nationality and their right to, to possess and, and, and to be in and, and to enjoy their own country, their own land, and to invite others here on certain conditions, by all means, and due course to welcome them as permanent residents or even citizens perhaps, but not in the way that's being done now over the heads of the Irish people without consultation, without consent, without even respect for the viewpoint of people in their own communities, where you have busloads coming into little villages and the population is more than doubled overnight and they're supposed to suck it up and swallow it. You see, so you, people need basically to, 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 to start to think through all of these things and and stop don't you know these these were this reflex thing of, I'm not a racist but or the other one is there where people say well we we would welcome all these people but we don't have the resources no you wouldn't you wouldn't like if you're a community of 120 people and you get 150 people overnight you're not going to welcome those people because you don't be in a position they're going to decide whether you're welcome or not do you understand so this is nonsense and and you know it doesn't matter what facilities you have. And the other question is then, how come if these facilities are so available, or so readily available now, they were never available before for the people themselves? These questions, you know, but that's even futile, futile to talk back to these people. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about so people can understand these things themselves freely in their own minds. So they can, what they say, they make clear sense and that they can encourage one another with the clarity of what their understandings are and how they express them so that they know that there's no doubt in their mind that there's anything in any way questionable about their defense of their own land, their own community, their children's birthright, their children's homeland, their children's home. They have every moral right to do that and the people doing this to them have no moral rights at all because they are blackguards and thugs and liars. That's, that's the only way I think uh, of, of, of combating that form of propaganda. There's no kind of silver bullet trick that you can pull. You have sincerity is the answer. Truth is the answer. You tell them what you feel in your heart. You love your country. You love your, your village. You love your homeland. You know, you have a right to that. You have a right to cherish your homeland. They have no right to steal it from you. It is not theirs to steal. It is not theirs to dispense. Yeah, that's my thoughts exactly. And you put it so eloquently and that's exactly what people need to get it straight in their head. And I, I, I have to remind myself of that sometimes. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I, I do that myself. I'm saying uh, I'm not racist, but, and I, I try and check myself on it because it's ridiculous. I know I'm not racist and you shouldn't have to, Put that out there first before you. Yeah, before you but see, you're saying. yeah, but you see the you, by by actually saying that you're at, you're giving a certain cre credence to the accusation. Now it's subtle, you know, but it it, it it's like the the echo remains in people's mind. The word, the word, you know, and you say no. This is you know the only you know the only issue here is what has been done to the Irish people. That is the crime here. That is the offence. It's shocking, really. You know, I mean, I I you know, I think in a lot of to a high degree, I, mean, I think. That what we're dealing here with is that, that our own people are in shock because they cannot believe that people that they assume to be their representative, their leaders, as it were, their police force, their whatever they would be, politicians, are, are doing this and that they're not stopping, they're not listening, they're not responding to anything like even questions. They refuse to even hesitate for a moment before saying, announcing the next tranche and the next plan and the next uh, target uh, uh, that they have in mind. And, and people are, are dumbstruck by this. This is unprecedented in our history. I mean, this is Cromwellian stuff. You know, and in fact, you know, the, the time is not far removed when we will have to be careful, lest we libel Cromwell by comparing him to these thugs. Yeah, it, it goes from, from bad to worse and from one absurdity to the next. Like, 
for example, you probably heard that the, the guards were asked by Gript about the pronoun use within the force. And then mm-hmm. they, had to come out and they were going to renege on that. And then they're, 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 the guards are recruiting in Mosny, um, I pass refugee centre for new recruits. So uh, for, uh, is it like, are they trying to just make our heads explode? Is that what, what it's all about? Keep us off balance? Well, that's that's certainly part of it. I mean, demoralisation is a central element of all of this, but but it's, it is itself the, the, the end result as well. I mean, what they're trying to do here is to 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 smash the connection, the the the, the imaginative and and the, the actual connection between the Irish person and his or her homeland. They're trying to convey that in as short a time as possible that that's history. You know, it's like Martin said, you know, we have to put those those old fashioned notions of sovereignty out of our minds now. But it's not just sovereignty that we have to put out of our minds, it seems. We also have to put out of our minds the idea of patriotism, of love of country. No, no, no. You are simply uh, as a tenant here or, uh, you know, uh, a guest in this, you know, this piece of land, this piece of earth, you know, this, as Thomas Davis talked about, the sandbank. Uh, everybody in the world is welcome to come here on the same terms as you have. You know, the fact that your your people have been here for 3,000 years means nothing. That's what they're saying. And people need to get into their heads. You know, it is very interesting. I saw a very interesting uh, a video there with Philip Dwyer there a couple of weeks ago where he went down to Kilbride and he, he confronted some uh, sold Irish soldiers, supposedly, who were there guarding this place where there's a whole lot of migrants and nobody knows why they're there, what they're doing there. And one of them, a corporal, attacked several times attacked philip very who very 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 resolutely and and bravely stood up to him i must say it was extraordinary and and but there was one point where he, philip was saying well no these people have just arrived i can't remember that context but it was you know these people just walk in and and this and and your man said to him, well how long have you been here well the answer to that is you know 1500 years boss what about yourself you know, like you see, this is the this is the trick that they learn in the seminars by the NGOs. All these people they're learning all these tricks uh, because there's all of the Irish people. Never, there's no such thing as the Irish people. They're a mongrel race, and you just come on, kind of come here over the years, and they're bits and pieces from all over the place. And Irishness means nothing. That's essentially the game, and they're planting that in the heads of all these half morons, and they're spreading it around among themselves, and motivating each, motivating each other with it. And then again, they're up against the far right who believe something profoundly different. Uh, but the strange thing is that the things that the far right believe, profoundly different things, are the things that every po- politician with his shiny suit was uttering out of his mouth, out of every orifice indeed, uh, up to the day before yesterday. They had us sickened with their false talk, their bogus talk about the great heroes of Irish uh, patriotism. And now they're prepared to urinate on their graves. This is this is what people need to get their heads around, that these people are prostitutes, they're whores, they're bought and paid for. They have no love for Ireland. They never had any love for Ireland. They were just uttering platitudes when those platitudes were fashionable. I'm talking now about people like the president of all the vaxxed. Who isn't the president of all the people because he has betrayed all the people. He has betrayed the people who want to cherish their freedoms that was fought for in, and, and, and won in blood, which he would have prated about many, many times over the past decades. And now he can sign it into history with a, a new apartheid law that splits the population on the basis of a willingness to accept a poisonous injection. You know, people need to get the whole picture, you see. See, all of this is connected. The COVID thing is all connected in. The migration thing is connected in. The trans thing, the LGBT thing, all of these are of a piece. They're all orchestrated psychological operations which have one purpose, and that is control and defeat and plunder of the Irish people. Unless they get that into their heads, then they're going to just ignore this. And if they listen to RTE and listen to the Irish Times, they'll think that the only people raising their voices against this are some crazed Nazis. There are no Nazis. There are no far writers. They're just ordinary, decent Irish people trying to keep their country, keep their homeland, to have a place that their children can put their heads down and rest. 
and, and be kept safe, John, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Safe from, from the carry on that's going on. You, you probably seen there, there was a, a murder in uh, Limerick last week. And, um, you know, there was no description of the guy who did it, only that his arm was cut. And it turned out yeah. then that he had skipped the jurisdiction up up the north and that he was a very religious um, Afghan man that, that murdered yeah. the, the poor girl. Yeah, well, this is this is a repeat of what we've been seeing, you know, for the last uh, couple of years, you know, which we saw it in Sligo at this time last year, two gay men slaughtered by a Muslim. But they, the protests and the president and all the rest of it, what they wanted to impose on the public imagination was that this had something to do with Irish homophobia. The problem with Irish homophobia is that there isn't half enough of it. People are not alert to what these thugs are doing to the country. Because they're among the attack, they are the stormtroopers of all this and have been for quite a number of years. They're nothing to do with being gay whatsoever. These are actually ideologues who are trained foot soldiers of the regime and of the ideology. And th th what they did in that situation, when two gay men had been slaughtered, they came out and tried to make out to deny that it had anything to do with migration or anything like that, but it was to do with Irish homophobia. It had nothing to do with Irishness at all. It had certainly nothing to do with Irish homophobia, which is a very minor uh, phenomenon if it exists at all. Uh, what they call homophobia is anybody who raises any question to any demand of the LGBT goons. That's not homophobia. That's common sense. That's exercising your democratic rights to question and debate and ask people what it is they plan to do with your constitution, with your laws, with marriage, with the concept of family, with parent, the concept of parenting. What are you doing in, 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 in our school system? What are you trying to do to our children? Why do you want to be in libraries with dressed up as women, men dressed as women, reading stories to children? Why would anybody want to do that? Why would any sane man want to actually go into a library, dress himself up as a woman and read stories to children? Please tell me, I, I don't understand it. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know, I don't want to say, but like it, these people, it seems yeah. that they do not they have to be, get, they have to be, you know, in, they have to have an, an audience for, for them to get their kicks, it seems, and by children now. Well, you know, really, we know it's the, it's the grooming of our children. It's the basic. Also, it's also the breaking of the spirit of our children, so that they will be so confused they won't know where whether it's Monday or Tuesday. Uh, that's the agenda, and that's that's going to be successful if we don't stop it. It's already successful. We can see the effects of it in the woke generations. They've already been contaminated with all this poison. They they believe things which are contrary to their own interests and their own welfare and their own happiness, but they insist upon them. Uh, you know, the, the, the whole thing is so contaminated now with lies, the, the entire system. Again, we go back to what I said at the beginning, Gavin, you know, right? like we need to, to, to take this thing, whole thing apart, root, root and branch. This entire society needs to be taken down and put over the pit and restored to, to its, you know, to some form of functional uh, reason and, and, and coherence and decency above all decency, which has disappeared from the Irish landscape completely, insofar as the official Ireland is concerned. We definitely, people need to rediscover, and, I, and the point you made, just to go back to another point you made earlier, which is re really um, important, it's that to deny that we have our own ethnicity, that we have our own land, that being Irish is actually something. And then, you know, the next step to that is sure anybody can be Irish. Do you know what I mean? And I think I, I know I'm, I'm kind of gone back a bit to what you said, but that kind of stuck with me. That's yeah. playbook. Well, you see, again, I, I want to say about that, Gavin, it's very important. I mean, yes, it is, you know, migration happens and people come and go. And, and that, you know, and, and that's on the base, should be on the basis of the need of the host society. In other words, if you don't want people to come, then you shouldn't have to accept them. That's, you know, and that's a democratic process and it's cumbersome and complex to arrive at decisions. That's why we need debate. But that's why they've closed down all debate in our society for the last number of years, the last decade, essentially. Uh, to stop all this happening, it needs to be being discussed so it can be uh, pushed on people and they, they won't be able to actually talk about it uh, and and uh, have any capacity to 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 uh, control or to to dictate or to even influence what happens to their country. 
uh, you know, we 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 have this, these NGOs, uh, six billion a year we're paying them to destroy our country. And we have to pay for it as well as actually fluffer it. What's that about? Well, how do we think that's, how, who thinks that a good idea? You know, I, 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 I've, I'm staggered by a lot of this stuff that's, that's going on, that people really are so muted and, and, and lockjawed that they will allow their entire uh, futures to be destroyed, their children's birthright right taken from them, their homelands taken from them, their homeland, uh, their home, their existential home. The place that they 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 feel safe in in the world, you know, that we all come back to, we feel relieved, no matter where we've been, no matter how much we enjoyed our holiday. When we see the the land of Ireland again, there's something that that surges in us in our hearts, and we 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 don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that, and 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 uh, but we are losing it. We are going to lose it. Just look at any street now, virtually in any in any street town in Ireland. Suddenly, all these interlopers have come from nowhere. And they came in a period that we were we weren't allowed to 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 leave within to go beyond two or five whatever it was at the time kilometers of our own homes. They could come thousands of miles here to claim a piece of our of our beloved land. Like, come on, my people, wake up. That's 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 exactly the point. you that guy who um, murdered that girl in Limerick. Um, yeah, he came in during the lockdowns. Absolute insanity. We couldn't go. We couldn't leave the fucking house. And these lads are coming across the half the yeah. world. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you know, it's you see, there's all kinds of false stuff that perhaps in here, keeps here about slavery and you know South Africa and apartheid there and you know the the uh, Jim Crow and all this stuff. Nothing to do with Ireland whatsoever. Uh, the imperial past of Europe. No, nothing to do with Ireland. Colonial history, colonies. No, 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 nothing to do with Ireland. We were a colony, just like any Af any African nation. So. Yeah, but we have things in common. We have we can compare notes, but we owe you nothing. Be clear about that. Don't come in here shouting the odds, telling us what you're owed, because you want to learn, read some history first, boss. Because our history no, is more like yours than you realize. But this is it. That's the the absurdity, sure. And like what you touched on there, your man at the the gap, at the army barracks. Oh, where? What did he say? We were all. We were yeah, all he, he, yeah. We're all know, when did you? When did you come in? When did you? When did you come? When did you arrive? And as if yeah. like as if he like an Irish man like Philip Dwyer arrived the day before yesterday. No, he didn't. He's you know, his family has been here. I don't know the particularities, but I'm sure like mine, he's been here for hundreds upon hundreds of years. His family. We've staked our claim, boss, and that's the mm -hmm. end of it. Exactly. And just while we're talking about Philip, um, his channel has been nuked by YouTube, completely removed. Um, I don't think he's, you know, this is the whole, this is this is the fascism that they speak of. It's actually going on within our own government and, and the corporations. But yeah, exactly. just for anyone listening, John, to, to find Philip on Odyssey if they want to follow him, because we're after destroying his YouTube channel. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, I mean, he'll be freer there, and he'll have an up. You know, that he won't have to be watching his P's and Q's to the same extent. Uh, Odyssey is a good channel, uh, you know. But I mean, yes, that that's a classic example of what I was talking about—the deep state, the American deep state. That this is all working in, in in concert. You know, they're running this country. You know, I've written about this, uh, Gavin. I mean, that there was essentially in two thousand and eleven there was a, a silent coup in Ireland. I won't go into it now. I think I might have re referred to it in a previous podcast we did. But it's very important to understand this. That you know, the 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 that Obama came in here, the Queen of England was here, the, the, the in the same week. All of this was August was put in place. Then all of this Ireland basically was seen as strategically vital to the interests of these uh, uh, powers, which we see as our side. We see as our allies. They're not our allies. They're our enemies. They are our tyrant. They are our oppressors now. The Americans are. They've accused anybody who talks about it of disinformation. You know, it's and then they talk about the, you know, their democratic values and they talk about the terrible, uh, you know, uh, tyranny in China and Russia and all this. Come on, give me a break. You know, the, we know where the tyr the tyranny is. It's in Washington. That's where it's emanating from. Exactly. Look at Julian Assange and have the gall to point at Russia and other and other countries. When Julian Assange, he looks like, I don't know what he looks like, the poor man is 
disheveled looking. He, he looks like he's not close to death. Yeah, you know, but that's freedom and democracy. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, they, we like we have been, but again, you see, you have to then, you know, uh, squeal round and look at our press, like and look what they're doing to our nation, like the lies they are telling, the industrial lies that they are pounding our our country with from morning till night. Uh, or you know, there's no possibility in that uh, arena of getting any even a scintilla of the truth across. So you know, like it's it, it's quite extraordinary for me to see this, you know, Gavin, because you know, as a, as you know, I was a journalist in this country for 35 years, and uh, you know, I was writing about politics and I was mixing with politicians and you know, uh, you know, giving them as far as I could a fair you know crack, uh, uh, you know, each one in his turn and and being decent to them. I can't believe I'm gobsmacked every day. I wake up and think, can this not be a dream? Please let this be a dream. It has to be. What are these people doing now? I can't, what hold does the American government have over these people that they can convince them to speak such nonsense against their own people and do such appalling things to them? What, 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 what have they done? What secrets do they nurture like that, that they can, can be compelled to do these appalling things to their own people? That's what I would wonder. Someone put out the suggestion that Leo was, um, he was a young, what do you call it, an intern over in Congress in, in, in the United States. So you wouldn't know what a compromise, as the Russians say, to have on him from his time over there as an intern. Well, we don't know. Uh, we don't know. And, and, and the, the problem is we look at their actions and they don't in any way equate with a, a representative of the Irish people elected by a democratic uh, uh, franchise and, and, and uh, mandated to carry out uh, act, actions and, and policies uh, congruent with the welfare of the Irish people. It's quite the opposite, the absolute opposite. I mean, if this was an occupying enemy, a force, if this was like, I don't know, you know, uh, if these were like Nazis or if they were, uh, uh, you know, Soviet troops with tanks like they came into, Czechs, into Prague in 68, if that's what was here now doing this, well, we'd say, well, OK, it's terrible, it's awful, but they are invading us and that's we have to just either defeat them and, and, and we, we would have no one doubt about it, you know, that the morality of it. But uh, to actually have our own leaders our own politicians, our own political class in its entirety, like all to one or two men, uh, women. I think, now, you know, there's probably two, three who have put up some form of spiritual resistance in the last three years to this. But the rest of it is you know, overwhelmingly on the same side. And it is entirely in, in favour of putting the jackboot, back jackboot on the face of the Irish people. They're, they're all just yes men for these globalists. I've seen that uh, you were just saying about what they have over us or whatever else. I think a lot of it is this international finance, the likes of BlackRock, Vanguard. And I've seen that, is it Jamie Diamond or something from JP Morgan? Yeah. Came out last week and he says uh, about t confiscating property to, to go green. So I think these lads are driving the wheel, these, these well, international I, I... finance. Yeah, well, you see, I, I, I believe that the situation is actually far more serious than, than we have understood. And, and, and I, I, you know, I hesitate to spell it out because it is very bleak. But I believe that what has actually happened as a, as a, as a consequence of the venality and criminality of our political class historically, particularly over the last 30 years or so, when, you know, uh, the national debt began to balloon and, and to far exceed our GDP. And then we had all these companies coming in, which were artificially boosting our GDP, but it wasn't real because it wasn't ours. And the result of that then, following on from the, the collapse, the meltdown of 2008, was that essentially Ireland was bankrupted. But I think that the enormity of that state of bankruptcy uh, did not really has not really been revealed to us and i think what it actually is is that through all the kind of loops of the the, the financial system and and the, the the roulette table that is now you know the money markets and the, the stock market and so on that we no longer own our own country now that of course is as a consequence of the of the application of a system of money, which is itself deeply, profoundly corrupt. I'm talking about the fiat money system, also the fractional reserve banking and so on, all these techniques, which have essentially fraudulent three card tricks, essentially, in order to plunder the ordinary working people. And that means that they have stealthily 
snuck, you know, all our resources and 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 taking them out of the real hard resources, the the, the land, the, the 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 natural resources, and so on. And these are now the property of strangers, of aliens, very rich aliens who are all represented by these companies you mentioned, BlackRock in particular, which is essentially the kingpin of the of the whole lot. There are other minor ones, lesser ones, but kingpin, the the, the BlackRock seems to dominate all of them. And they really are the, the representatives of the people who have the chits that actually represent the wealth of Ireland. Fraudulently taken. But you see, in order for us to call in that fraud, that fraud and call it out and say, be on your bike, we need moral, ethical leaders and we don't have them. So the, the, the leaders we have are, are in, in conspiracy with these, these, these fraudsters and, and thieves. And so their plan is to, to do their bidding, which involves basically one day it being explained to the Irish people that actually you don't own the ground you're standing on. You don't own anything. We own it all and we will let you stay here if you behave yourself. But only if you behave yourself and we will decide what behaviour is. That's where we are. Now, that's a very grave situation. And it just shows the urgency that we have to find a way to get rid of the poisonous vermin that we have allowed to become our leaders. I have to agree with everything that you just said there. That's the biggest, it's the fight of our lives. It's for our children and grandchildren. If it like. It's all going to be lost, in my opinion, if we don't, yeah. we don't get them out ASAP. I think we'd agree on that, especially with the digital currencies, John, and stuff coming down. It's really, it's really over if they get that in. It is, you see, and it's very interesting about you know, I I don't watch I don't pay much attention to the media, but people send me things, and and I pick up a picture from that, and I, I'm picking up now a new vibe that I, in, in, is coming out of the mainstream now, which is about it's slightly election mode, you know, the political process, and it's you know the strange surreal feeling you have is it that we're living in now and again in a different country that the dateline has slipped back again now to maybe 2003 or four, and we're just talking normal like we used to in about the election and. Will it be Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael or Labour or what the coalition, what coalition or Fianna Fáil, how's Sinn Féin going to do? Uh, but one of the little themes I'm picking up there is uh, the, where the journalists, the journal liars now are going out and they're batting against Sinn Féin. Now, I have no problem with that. You know, I, I, my position on this is, is, is kind of a difficult one to articulate, where I don't think you, did, well, you could actually, with a straight face, argue that there's anything worse much than Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. You, you couldn't really say that, that it's possible to exceed their venality and criminality. But in a certain sense, Sinn Féin succeed in doing that. They, they, I think because they're clearly ruthless, they're, they're, their roots in violence are much more recent than the roots in violence of the other two. And for that reason, we all have, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think to, to a duty to ourselves and our children to be very cautious what we what we think about in this context. Uh, however, I mean, I, 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 at another level, I couldn't care less who wins the election. It doesn't matter at another level because the policies will be the same anyway. It's just that the execution of them will be a bit more brutal if it's Sinn Féin, perhaps. Perhaps. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's true. Is it possible to be any uglier than, than Brad Creep and, 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 and Martin? I don't know. It's a debatable point. But, uh, you see, really... We need to get into our heads. I heard a very good thing on, on a video last night. I was watching. There was a guy called Matthew Goodwin who wrote a book about po nationalist populists. He's an English guy. And he was talking about the, the polls in England. And he said a very interesting thing. He, that, that, that he was talking about Labour and, 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 and the Conservatives and, and in that kind of tug of war that they conduct all the time. And then Labour are way ahead now. And he was saying that. He says, but then and I was thinking, oh, God, and then it's terribly depressing, you know. But then he said, but he says, above Labour, there's another party. There's another section, he says, that is, that is, that is far away and away ahead of either the Conservatives or the Labour. And I said, who the cook would that be? He says, none of the above. None of the above. Now, wouldn't it be absolutely wonderful, Gavin, if we could actually get on to the, the, the next ballot paper, a box called non, none of the above? I would predict a 99% vote for the none of the above party. No doubt about it, John. I think people are just like, oh, this is the whole, it's the, the Irish problem, you know, they can't be any worse than the last crowd and try to look, give them a go. And how can you say anything bad about them when they haven't been in power? I've heard all the 
throw. Yeah, that, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Give them a chance. Give them. Yeah. The problem is that a chance could take five years, and that's enough to sink us under the waves. Exactly. That's enough for us to be living under full blown Marxism and communism. I want yeah. to bring back in Patricia there, John, if you don't mind. Because she's a few questions, and then Finn has a question, and then there's a couple of people with their hands up as well. So. Surely, yeah, surely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gavin. Um, John, um, our greatest resource in this country is our children. New generations of young people must, to a measure, carry the responsibilities and burdens of our mistakes that we might turn over to them. I think, and I'm asking you as well, um, basically, um, we we need to instill in our children the power, the power of leadership. It is important that they must be trained to be wiser than we were, trained to keep the rules that we broke, trained to restore the integrities which we have disregarded and trained to recognise sovereignty of a plan. And if these if these basic foundations are adhered to by our future generations, they will be able to live in a peaceful and secure society and thrive. If these basic fundamental rules are not obeyed, uh, it will lead to chaos. I just w wonder what your thoughts are on that. That's further to our conversation today. It was just something yeah, that kind yeah. of came up. Well, I, I do think that, that, that uh, you know, yes, self-evidently, you know, the, the next, the coming generations need to be alerted to everything that's been happening and they need to be educated in a completely different way to the, tr the the drift of educational systems up to now. Certainly, you know, from what we've seen in the last uh, year or so, you know, all this, this LGBT stuff and so that that has to just go, no question about it. But they also need to be educated into in politics and in, in civic matters and constitution, law, you know, and all of these things so that they will be alert to the tricks that are being played on them and the things that are being done to them, propaganda. So that they are not brainwashed ever again, like their parents were in the in the in the last three years, uh, you know <clears throat> that, and and it's into the point where they will actually sit back and, and allow their country to be taken over and trampled upon. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that uh, we 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 are at a very very uh, challenging and chilling moment in our history, because you know. We have essentially allowed these blackguards to take over the power, the reins of power, and we can't wrest them off them uh, so easily. And we are running out of time to save our country and save our children's birthright. And so we need to work uh, urgently to, to mobilize ourselves. Each one, I'm not talking about any mobilization of an army or anything. I'm talking about each person mobilizing themselves and moving out of their houses onto the streets peacefully to make their presence known and uh, make their their feelings known by their presence not by shouting and roaring or kicking or screaming just simply be there like i think as that italian mother sentinelli and piedi was a, it's this group that i talked about earlier this the standing sentinels in other words the defenders of the truth the defenders of the law the defenders of peace the defenders of democracy because none of the people that claim to be doing that now are doing it they're doing all the opposite things and, you know, we all have, uh, we, you know, <clears throat> I have a child, I have, you know, lots of people have children and some people haven't, but they have nieces and nephews and grandchildren that they are whatever that they, they, they love and, 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 you know, adore. And I would just say to people, you know, if you lack motivation, think of them. Think of them and think of the, the happiness, you know, I mean, like for all the demonization of our country and our past. All of us know that for all that life is a trial and, and, and is, can be a veil of sorrow from time to time, there are great moments of joy. And particularly when you're a child, you, live, you have a wonderful time. You have a lovely, beautiful, most people have beautiful childhoods and remember beautiful childhoods, even if it's only because they forget the bad parts. You know, uh, that would be my wish for people, that they could say to their children, you know, you have now the chance because of my actions to live as happily and as peaceably as I lived as a child and as a teenager. And your children will have that chance too, because we decided enough is enough and spoke our minds and said, no more. We're not appreciating, we're not taking this anymore. We're not accepting this anymore. We have enough of your lies. We have enough of your bullying. We have enough of your gaslighting.
uh, we have enough of your 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 nonsense. Uh, we have enough of your nonsense. Uh, you know, take it away. Take yourself away. Be gone. We this we are taking our country back today. Fantastic. That's fantastic, John. And basically, um, I just I just have one question for myself and then a member of the audience asked me to ask a question for as well. But my my other question would be uh, moving forward now that there seems to be, uh, you know, a lot of people are starting to peep their heads, you know, out of the sand and they're looking around and they're seeing there's a lot of, you know, things aren't great in the hood. And um, how can we engage those people to to, you know, to see how precarious a position we are in, you know, without without immediately them freaking out, going, oh, you're far right, you're nut jobs, you're conspiracy well, theorists. Like, yeah. how, how can we feasibly get them? We have an opportunity now, John. This is this is our moment now. I agree. I agree. I, I think there's there's a change happening and it has been happening for a while. It's slow, but it's speeding up. And I noticed in, in the, the demeanour of people towards me personally, because I got a lot of hostility in the first couple of years of the whole COVID scam. Uh, and then it sort of went into a kind of a silence. And now it's kind of like there's a warmth into people again, you know, where it's not almost, it's almost not even back to 2019, but it's back to about 2012, you know, that sense of you know, you, you, that I, you used to be in in the in in the involved in the debates and discussions in this country. You know, and and uh, you know what happened and and why 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 when we need it can this not happen now, and all that kind of thing. You know, so it's it's very promising in lots of ways. And then you see all these people on the streets coming out. You know, maybe in a in a sort of a disorganized fashion, but nevertheless with great passion and great heart. And and again with their children to the fore, you know, there's those pictures of the children, the mothers with their prams, you know, and, and the outrage of the Antifa that they couldn't beat the heads off people because there was those children in the way. I mean, that was a great moment uh, and so on. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, we we there's nothing, you know, we don't have access to the to the to the the, the, the sound system. Uh, so we can't get on there and tell people we can't commandeer RTE, you know, uh, and, and to tell people what the truth is. But we can continue to do what we're doing. And I think that if we continue to do it, you know, to bear witness, not just in our words, but in our being, you know, that, that we are people who are truthful and are passionate about our country. And that's all. And there's no angles. There's no hard edges on it. This is all it is. And we are saying to people, what you're hearing is nonsense. What you're hearing is propaganda. Trust your own instinct trust your repugnance of these creeps who are trying to do these things to you just look at them look at their greasy smiles uh, you know it's isn't it obvious isn't it obvious like i mean i, I just find it extraordinary but you know when you actually think about say the lgbt thing which people will sort of say they all live and i like to live and let's let live well you know anybody who's ever tried to be involved in any form of political activity in ireland or anywhere else will tell you above all else that even getting the most basic thing done or achieve any little thing, whether it's getting a poster put up at a shop or getting a notice read out of the radio about something, you know, uh, it's it's pulling teeth. Uh, it's very hard. And yet these people can commandeer the whole world in a matter of months. You know, they have flags. They have a month to themselves to celebrate their their sexual acts. They have, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, every corporation uh, with their flags out its windows, up its flagpoles. Uh, they have every politician praising their cause as if it was the most important thing that ever arose in the entire history of the world. That's not natural. Do people not see that? That this is all contrived. It's all orchestrated. That these people are not what they seem to be. They are foot. They are they are they are foot soldiers. They are agents provocateurs. Uh, they are the 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 ground troops of the assault on our nation. That we, they were the first to enter in and to storm the 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 the, 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 the people's uh, uh, castles, their homes, their their minds, their thoughts, and to 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 stop people thinking even of things that they have felt in their guts, never mind speaking them. 
So people need to start waking up to all this. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people have an instinct, but the, the difference is that the problem has been in the distance between what they know in their hearts and maybe they know in their heads as well, but what their mouths are able to utter. Because they, 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 that lockjaw that has been insinuated by all these bullies for the last decade is very powerful, but it is fatal. It is fatal not just to each person who suffers from it. It is fatal to the entire nation of Ireland and to every, the future of every child born of this soil, born of this blood. That's fantastic, John. And um, my final question is actually from a listener. Um, he was just wondering, um, Ireland's cooperative movement, um, would you have any idea um, in regards to this, how it worked? And I suppose how it would translate into a source for people to unite and potentially, for, you know, from being a business model to eventually forming a political, you know, movement or political system. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, it could have its place down the road. Uh, uh, I mean, undoubtedly it will. I mean, we, we, we need to go through this initial period first, whereby we break down these, this resistance in the minds of people. The structures then will reveal themselves, you know, and all those will be important, you know, and to the, apart from the ones who have which have sold out, which sadly includes like the Gaelic Athletic Association, like who have sold out to these to these these uh, bullies and and uh, corporate uh, uh, colonists. Uh, so yeah, I mean, all of those things will have their part to play. But remember, I I think that we're looking at a situation, ironically, where the great salvation of Ireland, in the long term possibly results in its destruction in the short term. In other words, it, we need everything to collapse, I think, before our country can be saved from the fate that, is, that awaits it and its people. Because what will happen then is that all the people who have been doing this will run away. They will no longer be interested. Now, this could happen with the, the currencies that are collapsing and they're going to, there's going to be massive collapses of the, the major currencies, the dollar, the euro and the pound sterling are in serious danger. They're very wobbly and it could happen at any time. And, you know, that that will be traumatic. And we need to that's when we need to our We all certainly will need our cooperative stand, our cooperative spirit, you know, to help each other to basically stay alive, to provide for each other, to, to help each other through those months and possibly even years of strife. But I think that, that the Ireland that emerged on the far side of it could be a far, far better place than we even dreamed about in our wildest dreams. Uh, because we, won't, we, we, have, we, we were never allowed the opportunity to, to impose our own will on our own country. It was always taken from us. And essentially what we were given was a kind of a totalitarian model. Take it or leave it. This is the way it's been decided now. Who decided by whom? Well, well, it's been decided, you know, uh, that, you know, we didn't have any say in it. And it's not nice. It's not pleasant. Does anybody really think now that the Ireland out there is, is a place worth, worth living in in the future? Would you like to die? Would you like to be on your deathbed and see how, leave this to your children and your grandchildren? Come on, we need to clean up this mess. We need to take it by the scruff of the neck, shake it down, get rid of the vermin and start again. Absolutely, John. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. Um, if anybody has a question, stick up their hand and Gavin will unmute you for John. Finn is I have a there. question, Patricia. Oh, sorry. Apologies, Finn. Yeah, go ahead. John, Hi, I George. haven't heard anyone else speak with such love and emotion about Ireland. I really haven't. You're the man. I had a lump in my throat when I heard you speaking about Ireland just there now today. I could cry when I hear you talk about it. But look, I was thinking today when I heard you were coming on and I was wondering if this could be done. To, to People are on the cusp of waking up and they just need a couple of pushes. And I was wondering if someone like you could do a, sh a very short talk tying all the different things just the, the about the four main strands you know the pandemic the transgender thing the digital pass and there's uh, something else and if you could just sort of bullet point them but put them in your inimitable way together that you could put it out to camera 
and we could all share it to our relatives in the hopes that they would in, in send it to the people who we think are ready to receive it. And I think that would do a fantastic job. I don't know whether you've ever thought about doing this, but you're the only man who could do it because you have this knack of, of bringing it all together. And the way I it put it into my mind was when you were talking to James Collins there on your last talk, it was at the part where you said, this is not about your health. This was always about your wealth at that part. And you kind of went into a talk then about explaining how it was going to work. And if you could do that sort of talk and tie the other bits in with it, I think that would work. I really do. Or even if people here could memorize that kind of talk so that when they're out talking to their neighbors or those people that we're talking about that are ready for the dominoes to go, if we had, could memorize those things that you talk about, I think it would be fantastic. What do you think of that idea? I know we, we've asked a lot of you already. What do well, you no, think, I mean, though, John? I, you know, I think that kind of thing could have a part to play. I don't think, to be honest, Fanula, I don't think it would be a silver bullet either. Uh, and and I, I certainly wouldn't be. I don't put myself forward as the only sole voice who has something to articulate about this. There are quite a few people who are well capable of doing it. And I suppose the message is that we do need to find mechanisms where what you're saying there really is we need to find mechanisms where these nuggets of truth can be got to the ears of the Irish public. That's the challenge, you see. H how is that to happen? Because unfortunately, we're shoved into ghettos, you know, for, with all the best will in the world, all the platforms we have, and they're excellent in their little ways. But they are little ways compared to the, 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 the loud hailers, which are at, in the control of the liars and the, the, the schemers and the criminals. And, and, and th th so that's the challenge. But by, sure, by all means, like if, if, if something I could do in that regard and then to simplify things and uh, rinse things down, I'd be more than happy to do it and, and to help other people to do it as well and to get, to get to that point where, you know, there are certain key issues going out there to people's mind and to the public imagination, to little encapsulations of the core issues and, and put them in a way that is I don't, you know, not necessarily poetic or anything like that, but that is clear and resonant and, 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 and you know, re resonates with the people's own lives, you know, and their own experience in this country, their love of this country. Because, you know, I, it's a very interesting thing, for all. I, I, I was at an event last week where there was, you know, it's a kind of a resistance thing, but it was a kind of a public event, a semi-private event, where lots of people in a particular community in Dublin uh, were going there. And they've been going there quite a long time for, for a little. And they have poets and uh, uh, comedians and, and, and uh, musicians and singers and all that. And, and it was very interesting because there was one guy there, a guy called uh, Patrick O'Byrne, and, and he, he had dug out a lot of uh, uh, material about the Brehan laws and... and some of the songs you know from that ancient ireland and talking about the history and and really you know there, there was at the same time you know, there was this sense of profound sadness in the room as he was talking and singing and yet this exhilaration as well rising that you know this has happened before we've gone through this multiple times in ireland our people have gone through it and we came round we came out of it and we survived and and somehow, you know, it's, it takes a crisis like this to make people, Irish people, really love their country or, or admit to loving their country with the profundity, which, which I think most Irish people really do love their country. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that's the thing, to get to those people, to find that channel, to find that way. And I mean, I, 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 it, it, you know, we do our little bits, you know, we try to, you know, communicate, but, you know, we're not we're still on the runway we haven't taken off that's the problem you know we need a bit we need to get into the air uh and and i to be honest not sure how that's to be because i i i how that's to be done because unfortunately uh you know you're in then to questions of, of resources and all that which is tedious you know and 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 you know we don't have them and and so on so yeah i mean if there's anything i could do in that regard Let's think about it. Let's t talk about that idea. That I think you're right. You've, you've got it, like in the sense that I think it is the encapsulation of certain clear ideas uh, that that are moving and clear and true. That that will awaken. Yeah, people. because John, you see, sometimes, um, 
like your interviews are absolutely brilliant, but sometimes the interviewer can be a distraction. You know, if you had a focus of the four bullet points and yeah. got them all down and in your head had them and then just talked, you know the way yeah. off the cuff well, you can do it. And I know, yeah. Well, you see, I, I, the funny thing about it is, uh, Fanola, and this is a slightly jokey thing, but it's, it's real as well. I'm not very good at, at I, I don't like cameras. I don't like, you know, like I, I, I was in RTE for a while there years ago and they were trying to, to educate me to actually how to speak to a camera. And I was like a rabbit in, in the headlights. You know, I couldn't do it. I looked terrible, I, I, even to myself. I, and I'm not, but so I do need that the provocation of somebody asking me the question or engaging in the conversation to actually, because I have no idea what I'm going to say before I start. You know, it comes out uh, because I've lived in this country. I've breathed this country all my life. I love it. I, I know it intimately in, in, in its molecular structure. You know, I know it at the quantum level and, and uh, I, I love it and I'm heartbroken for it. Uh, that these these slime have have taken it in, as their own and are dispensing and breaking it up for scrap, uh, you know. So yes, anything we can do in that way. Let's put our thinking caps on and let's think about that. How would we do that to to because that's key to to send out those messages. You know, back in the in the in, in the Soviet bloc, they, they did by Sami Stat in little. You know, they would literally write out each other's books in new copies. And pass them around, and they would be passed around multiple people, and they'd be in people's pockets, and, and you know, uh, you know, be dog-eared and so on. But they would be all red, and and that was the way. It took a long time now. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to be doing it for seventy years, you know. Uh, so, but maybe there are ways in the technological age where we can maybe reduce that seventy years to maybe I don't know, uh, seventy weeks, maybe. Yeah. Oh, John, my heart breaks. But anyway, thank you very much. Thanks, Fanola. Thank you. God bless you. This is it. Um, yeah, I, just to come in on what you were saying there, I'm going to let one of the lads in for a question. The, the thing is, like what, like what happened to Philip, you know, as soon as you get traction, like we, it, the audience is what matters. If people heard the ideas, they might come around. Every time someone starts to get up off the ground, they're kicked in the nuts by these. Yeah. Assholes taking out, taking the platforms out from under them. You know. Yes, that's right. That's right. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's in, in a way, it's a it's a compliment to to Philip and to others. Although it's no consolation uh, that that they are so scared that they're taking them down. You know, and that he is so powerful and so effective and so so passionate and clear in what he says and and, and what he his courage like is absolutely admirable and and inspirational. Uh, you know, in the face of this thuggery to be out there on his own with his camera. You know, and and keeping his sense of humour all the time is is so beautiful. I definitely see him as a threat if they take the platform off them. So I, I just think we'll have to, like you touched on it there earlier about the technological age, we're going to have to figure that there is ways of getting around that type of censorship, and we need to be implementing those techniques. Like we need to be doing them. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. You know what I mean? They can't yes. be allowed to keep, to keep uh, taking people's voices away. Um, well, they have done so, but I mean, we have to reassert, and I mean, we have to say to them, we have to come and uh, let them know that they're not entitled to be prating about democracy and democratic values, and at the same time doing this stuff. That 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 doesn't work. You can't do that. Please stop that. Whatever else, be honest about your ignorance and your 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 thuggery and your fascism. You know, but don't 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 try and fool us that you that you're the, the representative of these guys that they're that Michael D. Higgins is some kind of paragon of democratic values. He is not. He is the president who signed apartheid into Irish law. That's who he is. That will be what will be on his gravestone. No, no less than he deserves. Danny, have you a question there? There, Danny. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, um, oh. Yeah, I'll just jump in there quickly. Uh, yeah, I guess just wanted to expand a bit, John, on what, what Finn was saying there. Um, and again, just to kind of reiterate some of the points or whatever. And I I think there's this thing. It, it was kind of a conversation maybe we had last week or whatever about uh, Jerry O'Neill, West Awake, had said, 
you know, that there was four conversations that were being closed down or that you couldn't have or whatever. And one of them was Ukraine, one of them was the trans, one of them was COVID, and the other fourth was climate change or something like that, let's say. But we were then kind of talking about, um, uh, you know, or I was kind of, it, it, it was after, I guess I seen some video on the Fingless crowd above in Dublin, and just their language was bang on there. I guess the video was last week. I don't know when it happened or whatever, but they they were specific on the education, on the children's education. There was a very clear issue to be challenged, and their language was just bang on. And I thought how, you know, like that, the, the three other issues um, are probably coming near that level where the language and the issue is being very clearly defined. And I suppose that was just something, and I was kind of bouncing around in my head a bit on whatever we were talking about here, but that was on one level, this whole language and that positioning of bringing these arguments or issues coherently to a place where they're recognized for what they are. And then the second part of it, and you, you used the, the, the word there, the ghetto, you know, and, and this we all we're all in these kind of information silos and there's a lack of there's a lack of connectivity and there's a lack of um uh you know kind of mobilization and coherence and connection within a lot of people that are tuning into this stuff now and just on, on the last point I, you know I, I know we're kind of familiar but the more we kind of talk about this we can maybe uh, or resonates and we can clearly identify some of the issues or how to go forward or what for people to do. But one of the things you you were mentioned earlier on, and I was just kind of delighted to kind of hear it earlier on in the conversation there with yourself and Gav, like how you were saying about racism and how we've become apologetic and we'll say, oh, well, I'm not racist, but, and that whole thing, um, I think, some of the conversations um, we have here or whatever on Off Grid or wherever it is, uh, I, I think we're, we're forgetting that all the time. We're forgetting that everybody has been bet down with that stick. Yeah. And so, you know, who we call the normies are probably just, you know, gone into their fucking head going, oh, I don't know what to say, don't know what to do. And it's a very subtle, very powerful stick. And we have to remember that uh, um, everybody's been hit with it and n- not forget that that's still something that's out there with the with the most amount of people or yes. something like that. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I, 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 that's exa- I think that's right. But I, I do think that, you see, uh, people will need a catalyst uh, to, to, to provoke them to accept what they already know completely to the point where they will now risk something or think they're risking or symbolically risk something because at that stage you won't be risking anything uh, things will, because it, things will reach that pass before very long where they won't any longer be able to pretend that what they're doing is good you know the authorities i mean they they will the so-called authorities they, they it will be clear what they're doing it will be clear that they're engaged in plunder and, and subjugation and, and oppression and and, and tyranny it will be clear. And then people, they see that the question is to make sure that that's not too late for us to, to, to mobilize the people as one, as one to, to, to defend themselves and defend their, their, their land. Uh, and I, I'm confident about that. I, I do believe that. I do believe that the Irish people have a great, uh, uh, you know, well of, of patriotism in their hearts, you know, and, and that it's just become suppressed by all of this, these lies and these, these, this awfulness and that, that we've had in the last 20 years. Um, you know, I, I really believe that, uh, you know, we talk about that we're losing our civilization. I actually think that, I was thinking there the last couple of days, that's, that's the wrong way to put it. We've already lost our civilization because if we had a civilization, Civilization, the people who are involved in politics now in Ireland would not even be allowed in the door. You know, uh, uh, they would never have got in. We have let our civilization slip. It can be recovered. Uh, 
and 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 that moment is coming i think when that when that recovery will become possible and we also have to look to the to the, the international sphere because you know we won't do this on our own we we're dependent on 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 people in other countries and it's already happening of course we're not hearing about it like there the last uh, several weeks now there's three million people virtually every night on the streets of of, of harris and other uh, other french cities and towns you know there's an uprising there, an enormous uprising, and and so the moment is coming. The moment is coming. You know, I I think we're you know we we may be fretting too much. We are prepared in the sense that we're we're battle hardened, and and we have our ideas. We're capable of articulating them. All that's missing is the, the the that the people are not able to hear us yet fully, and not in the way that we need them to, not just totally. We don't need we, but that that moment may may come when we least expect it. So I, I'm I'm very hopeful. You know, I I, I do think. You know, I, I fundamentally believe that this is a war. I mean, people say it's a spiritual war. It is. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's a it's a war for for, to, to, for between good and evil. And and you know I, I I think ultimately good always triumphs in the end. I mean you know you it, you know a society won't function like the Soviet Union functioned after a fashion for for you know thirty forty years, but it began to fall apart then. And I think it would happen much more quickly these days. Uh, and and that's there's a truth in that. There's a natural truth in that. Uh, that that these guys are on the wrong side of the law and of history, and and we are on the right side of of history. And and therefore, you know, I think that you know we can be confident that the victory uh, it, it will come if it is not already won. And I, in a certain sense, I believe it has because, uh, you know, if you look at the pattern of these guys, they've been retreating from lots of their th- their 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 agendas uh, over the last couple of years, uh, incrementally, including like the Vax passport and all of that stuff. You know, and so I I think that. Um, you know, the apartheid thing didn't work. And none of these things have worked for them. So I, I'm quite hopeful in some respects. Uh, I think things are probably going as well as you could expect them to be at this stage. Uh, obviously, we have concerns. Obviously, we're anxious. Obviously, we're watching for the bounce of the ball and so on and so on and so on. But I, I, I'm, not un, I'm not unhappy. I'm not pessimistic about where we are. I think we're actually... Uh, you know, we've, we we should be, you know, I don't mean that we should congratulate, sit around congratulating ourselves, but we have done well to be still here and still speaking and still thinking and still to the extent that we are getting our message out and, and encouraging each other and affirming each other and, and supporting each other. And, I you know, I don't think they can... Uh, uh, they can defeat us. I mean, I think it's that, you know, as I said to Alex Craner there the last, when I interviewed him, you know, I said, you know, the thing is we have to leave it on the pitch. Like, there's no point in bringing it home with us. We have to leave it there. Put everything in. Don't, don't spare. Think of that child, that, that those children that you adore and think of their future. That's what you're fighting for. It's not for yourself. Exactly, yes. I would go to take one, one more question we'll take there from Forg, because Forg's a legend, not Minda. Hello. Forg, are you there? There, Forg, or Paddy, do you want to go first? Yeah, please. That would be great. Um. The other day I saw a video, which I think was genuine, of Christine Lagarde of the European Central Bank announcing uh, three things that she would she would make uh, public the proposals for digital currency in October. There would be control and cash would be limited to a thousand euros. If you went over the thousand euros and got found out, you would be put on some sort of grey list and uh, obviously punished in some way. Now, I think um, this could be the galvanising of the whole of Europe. Um, Do you think Ireland could be ready for that? I I do. Yes, I do. I I think that uh, people will understand, uh, I think, very quickly that that's uh, an instrument of absolute control. And uh, I think they will react accordingly. And it's the kind of thing, it's a classic example of something that you know, each, each person has to do it in their own private space. But if they know that other people are doing it, they know that there is safety in numbers. 
And I think that it's a thing that people could be persuaded to 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 mount a defiance on, and and just simply refuse and ignore it. And uh, you know those things. I don't see that. I don't see it working. But at the same time, I wouldn't be in any way complacent about it. Sort of just disappearing of its own volition. I think we do have to resist it. And uh, but I, I think there is a general kind of consensus among people that I would trust that this thing is not workable. Uh, but that's all the more reason why we have to fight it and and to make sure that we bury it six foot under. Yep. I agree with okay. that. Hey, Paddy, are you happy there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I was thinking a bit more um, rather than on a personal level, um, you know, collectively, um, I think there will be a lot of, well, there'll be huge reaction in France. There'll be huge reaction in a lot of European countries. You know, it'll be mm. collective. Yes. You in Ireland as well, John. Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. And I do think... You know that that the issue is such it's such a clear issue. You know, uh, people are so used to you know the independence of being able to have your money and the fact that you work. The money is a token of your work, and uh, of your contribution to society. How dare any banker tell you what you can or cannot do with it? How dare they? How dare they actually interfere in the in the the very ecology of the human person in the world? How dare they? And they, this is this is how we need to. To you know, to remind each other, you know, that what this actually means at, at at a fundamental level, because that's what they're doing. They're trying to break that connection between effort and reward. You know, that you do your day's work, you you in the farm, on the land, uh, the forest, and at the riverside, uh, whatever it would be, in the office, you know, you whatever, and and you get your 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 pay. The labourer is worthy of his hire, and they're saying no, you on our terms only, on our terms only, and you say no, no, no. Who are you? Who are you? No. So I do yeah, think, yeah, I think, I think throughout Europe uh, there will be an America. America is is not going to take this, absolutely not. Like a hundred million people in America will stand up as one man and say no. Thanks, John. Thanks, Paddy. Yeah, that was a great point there, John, because I meant to actually bring that up earlier on um, about. How dare they come for people's money that they've worked for? Like, who do these people think they are? Like, the, the, uh, Ursula von der Leyen is unelected. None of these people have been elected, and they think they can decide where, how you can spend your money. Like, what, we're living in fucking clown world. Sorry for cursing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it, you know, they, 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 unfortunately, their 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 arrogance is is a, is a symptom of the fact that they've been allowed to go so far without being stopped. Now the time has come to say, stop right there. Now you know, stop right there. Enough already. Just just stop yeah. now and sit down and, and keep your mouth shut from now on. We don't want to hear any more from you. You know, I think that's coming. I do think it's coming. You know, I I, I you know, I, I I think the one thing I felt about all these people from a long time is that they're okay when they have their the their role of the play, you know, and, and uh, but when things start to go against them, they have no understanding of what are the dynamics of the human person in, in reality. They've never. They don't really know people. They don't know what their what their limits are. They don't know what their 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 uh, desires are. They don't know what their uh, aspirations are. They don't really respect them, so they wouldn't know them. So uh, I I think they're going to be surprised what they when they see that the, the, when they see what people are really like. And I don't mean that it's going to be a violent reaction. They're just going to be simply people saying, no, no, we're going to get on with our lives now. Thanks very much for your interest in our well-being and so on and so on. But now could you please just fuck off and leave us in peace? Uh, yeah, I, I think that that moment's uh, fast approaching in France at the minute. I, um, I just want to bring in Ferg. Ferg, are you there? I thought you might have had a bit of trouble there earlier. Are you back? Do you want to say something? Hey, Gav, you all right? Hello, Fer. Not too bad. And hello, John. How are you? Not so bad. Yourself. Good to hear from you. Not a bad. I just want to say, um, for me personally, you know, if you're one of the guiding lights in this country for the truth and trying to rescue this want to light from Ireland back in these scumbags, and you have me utmost respect and support. That's all I wanted to say. And by the way, Gavin and Patricia, yeah, they're on one of the work. Every one of you is that just absolutely brilliant. God bless the whole audience. And God bless Ireland. We will have this. We're going to win this country back a little bit. Yes, we are. Far. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for everything you do. 
Uh, Stephen Delaney is there. Um, I, I'll, I'll squeeze in a question, but it's a long-winded one, John, if that's all right, if you're not in a rush. <laughs> no, sure. I'll probably give you a very short answer, though. I don't know. Go on. <laughs> oh, I, 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 would, I would assume you'd be able to, to sum it up very, very nicely, but uh, I, I'm, I want to hear your thoughts, and I think everyone else would as well, on the bank closure of the partner of Derek Bly. And I, I just want to kind of give a, a comparison of that to something that happened in the past, which would be, if anyone remembers the emergence of CAB, the Criminal Assets Bureau, they had to seek a high court uh, injunction or whatever it was to just freeze the account of one of the biggest gangsters in this country. And they had evidence that they had to provide to the court to do that. Uh, I'm just wondering, John, what do you think about the closure of a bank account of uh, the partner of a party leader uh, by someone who is probably on the living wage and in an arbitrary manner? Oh, it's a scandal beyond beyond uh, imagination. I mean, you know, and, and the fact that there's total silence in the official Ireland in its media, that the, that nobody, you know, regardless of what you think of Derek or whatever, uh, you know, that these people, of course, they're going to be opposed to what he thinks. That's nothing to do with it. You know, there's a principle here that has been breached, just as it was breached in Canada by Trudeau last year, uh, you know, that these people have no right to do this, you know, and, and I think this is something very, very, very sinister but there's a context here that i just want to very briefly go into which is i think you know it was you know there's so many ways you can come at these kinds of things and and you know you at a certain moment you you get a perspective on them and really what you're dealing with here when you see the way these banks are you know, uh, uh, you know arbitrarily making the decision obviously on instructions but that they're they're you know they're answerable it seems to higher authorities uh, who have no visibility and accountability in this situation that simply a straight this is this is the decision I'll suck it up and just get out you know but, but, you but see, would, would, of... would it would it not have to trigger like a criminal investigation is what I'm thinking before that could even be possible well it should be yeah of course but I mean they, they I believe that the letter that was sent out like had things about defaulting on debts or whatever so, and there was no such thing at all like I mean this is just def defamation and and lies and and uh, of course it is actionable but again I have to enter the caveat there that in order to actually uh, vindicate those rights you have to go into a system that we know to be corrupt from top to bottom so you know you know we need to kind of I suppose understand that and then think it through in a different way and but I, I think that really what we're dealing with here is a system that overall if you look at what's actually happening at a fundamental level in our societies is enabled by a number of things obviously the corruption of the press is a central one but then you think about the corruption of the press what enables that well what enables it is the the, the, the availability of basically cheap money in other words valueless money I call it toy town money that's what we've had been working with for the last nearly a decade, but particularly in the last three years. And these companies, these organizations are entirely dependent for their survival day to day on that system as such as it is. And they are therefore amenable to any instruction they receive that is sent down from a, however a high it comes from. And, and that's what we're up against. You see that, you know, we have a, a country that is utterly corrupted by paper money that has no value. But it has the value that it can actually sustain these organizations day to day, so long as they play this corrupt game. And, and that so that there's nothing that cannot happen in such a in such a scenario that, that it, this is what happened to Derek and his wife is shocking and it is very terrible. And, and uh, you know, it's unthinkable that that any agency like a bank could have the power to do that without just cause or without any process. But, you know, like we're in this situation where we have to realize that there is nothing they can stop at and there is nothing that they need stop at because there is nobody to stop them except the people themselves. In just other just words, to follow up on that, John, um, I, I think that there is momentum building and that it, like, if, if Derek was to be encouraged, like I, 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 I spoke to Derek briefly on this and I have said to him that, look, you need, you need to just bring this through the courts, win, lose or draw, you know? And... Um, Mm. I, I I think that with the momentum behind us, that if Derek could mount with help a successful challenge, it could actually set a precedent in Ireland. 
that 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 would would protect us from um the arbitrary world economic forum you know limits on spend expenditures yeah. um they, 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 these are the kind of um uh, the, the 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 implications of 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 doing something and doing nothing right now in this moment are, are you know there's a huge swing lads and Derek has an opportunity now I think if we all call on him to do it to go through the courts for an absolute shortcut with this I think he's ne- he's got such a good case here that well, he, he has, has a good case yeah yeah I agree I agree is a good case I, you know I mean I I wouldn't uh, I would be guided by his own sense of things because he's a smart guy and he he knows how to dissipate or how to use his energies in the best possible way I think he would have a, he would have a chance of winning uh, he would certainly have a chance of making a, a a point in a very strong way but you got to remember that you know we live in this again this is a corrupt country i mean you know uh, look what's happened to to enough work like look at the, the way that a judge can ballyrag him like and refuse to allow him to actually question the way that evidence is presented or the way the discovery process has been exercised and so on like That's unsustainable, and, though, John, i would feel I, I don't think they could continue to do that the way they're doing it if that makes sense like, are, are are we not drawing them out into a place where they are making fools of themselves? I think we are. I, I, I would hope so. I would hope so, certainly, yeah. Uh, and and you're right to the extent that, yes, if we keep doing this, we will shame them to, to, to hell. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing, really. I, I, I don't disagree in any way whatsoever. It is, a, it is absolutely something that should be challenged. My concern, I suppose, would be that it could take, they could make it take years, you know. I mean, they could drag it out for years, you know, and, and then the point is lost. Uh, you know, but nevertheless, by all means, I would tell, uh, you know, I would, you know, uh, say to Derek, why, why not? Why not uh, put in a case and see what happens and, and uh, continue? Yeah, but I, I, I mean, people, because there certainly people need to know to the extent that they don't know that these things are possible now in our country. Uh, this is shocking, like, because unfortunately, like, you know, I mean, even in Canada, I mean, nothing emerged from it, like, the, the, these terrible things happened last year to the truckers. And nothing changed. But at least people got to know that, you know, that Tordo Tur- Tur- is a scumbag beyond measure. And and they now know that. And he is disgraced before all history, you know, for sure. But, but and, I, I, I would imagine that there is thousands of court cases gone in Canada that we haven't heard about yet. And, and we will hear about that in the future. That's what I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I yeah, think they were so excessive in Canada that 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 it caught them on the hop. But if you look at at Holland, the farmers have now won a political election in the Senate off the back of the the Canadian uh, trucker rally. They held their own farmers tractor rally in 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 uh, in Holland, and within a space of a few months now, they've got the majority of the Senate farmers. Yes. Um, there are things that are possible. I I I think. Um, Cocaine fueled optimism is needed here, um, in 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 some of our efforts, and uh, I I I think I see opportunity with Derek's case because no, it looks I... to be it looks to be the actions of some chewing gum chewing upstart in a middle level office. And the very likely, are, very likely, who, who wants to make a name, make, make a name for them? Yeah, very likely, there's somebody trying to make a name for themselves, and he's too stupid to actually see what they've done. That's very. It has the appearances of that. It's hard to imagine that any grey suited bank manager uh, authorized this. Like you know, it really is. Uh, and but that's been the pattern in our country for a long time. You know, where these kind of blue haired lunatics are basically making decisions about censorship and so on in Twitter and, and all these places. Uh, you know, so they've kind of got the idea that they have that in entitlement and that they're well qualified to do it and, and until somebody dissuades them of that they're going to continue so yeah i mean i definitely in principle agree with you but i wouldn't want to be uh saying dictating to derek what he should do about his own business i mean you know it's it's not easy taking on the, all these things and he has his hands full with the work he's doing and he's doing an extraordinary job uh but anyway i, I wish him the very best and it's something i could do i would certainly help him Good stuff. Sorry, Steve. I just put you. I just muted Steve there because we want to. We just want to wrap it up because you've been really, really generous with your time. Um, I think Stephen has points there. I think that Derek should probably follow it up. And I was also thinking about Philip's thing. I know it's different, but these people need to be followed up. They need solicitors' letters for these. For, you know what I mean? There's no just madness all around. I think they should be pursued anyway, even if nothing comes of it. 
John, yeah. thanks a million. Yeah, I mean, I suppose part of the reason I'm slightly hesitant about this is that I can tell you now, I mean, if you were to ask me the name of a solicitor or a barrister who would be capable and willing and able to do this case, I wouldn't be able to tell you a single name. That's how bad things are. You know, it, 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 there just isn't anybody who is uh, able, willing, and, and, and uh, 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 you know, who would actually care enough because they're brain dead, these people. Yeah, That's it's, a problem. It's, it's, no patriotism, no, no nothing in them, no, um, no morality or no sense of right and wrong or nothing. No, no. It's all about the money. It's follow the money. You know, it, it, that's all it is, you know. And, and uh, the fee at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters, you know. And, and you really have to, anybody who's involved in litigation has to really look to themselves and say, well, What's really going on here? Like, I mean, do I have any chance in this? You know, it's a it's a question all of us, you know, have to ask. I mean, in the case myself and Gemma took to in the court, we kind of knew from the very beginning that we weren't going to get anywhere. But we went ahead in order to make the point and to to make it clear that, that they wouldn't be able to slither away from the idea that they were asked. The case was put to them, and they declined it. They turned it down. And, you know, they can bluff all they like and, and, and to the papers and with their corrupt journalists to tell people there was nothing in our papers. Well, history will decide that because the papers are there and will be read. And I, I tell you, a lot of them will be on the wrong side of history, John. There's no doubt about it. You can see a lot of them backtracking and trying to, you know, score them out with some of their positions over the COVID and stuff like that. So let's just yes. hope that they all get their comeuppance. Well, let's see. Let's see. But I, I think the, the, the thing is, I think that, that, you know, I think there is a, there is a change happening. But uh, it's a question of, you know, uh, allowing people to, to, to understand what is really going on. And, and, and you know, who knows how, how things will unfold? How know, we, know, we don't know how it will break. You know, it's like a game in a certain sense. You know, it's like a football game. Right? Things can suddenly change. Like the wind, you know, and and you, you have to. The thing is to be ready, to be fit and able to take that moment on the bounce. Yep, that's exactly it. We have to be the the winds or the you know the the, the agitators. John, do you want to plug? You've got a really good Substack. Do you want to tell people um, how to find it and stuff like oh, that? Oh yeah, you can get me on there. I I on John JohnWaters.substack.com. It's uh, called uh, or John Waters Unchained, Unchained, like in the Johnny Cash song. Uh, we'll we'll get you there as well. I think. Uh, so I do on articles there every week and the odd video as well. You know that I do interviews. I'm on up at the moment now with Alex Craner, who is this. Uh, uh, He's a really, uh, he used to be a hedge fund manager and he's an economic uh, expert and consultant and so on. He's a Croatian who lives currently in Geneva, or not Geneva, Monaco. Monaco. And, uh, but he's really brilliant about geopolitics and the whole Ukraine situation and, and Russian situation and all that. And uh, very interesting and a very positive kind of, not, not a gratuitously positive message, but that he, he can see through and, and in, a, not a, in a way not dissimilar to the way we're talking here, that there's a moment. And, you know, we may be, you know, further on than we think. I, I do believe that, that, that these guys, you see, they're bluffing, uh, they're bullying ahead as if everything was OK. But thing, everything is not OK for them. It's falling apart. And it's a matter of us not giving up just because they're able to bluff better than we are. Yeah, that's it. I, I think the I think slowly but surely people are going to wake up. I I, I feel it in my bones. It, it's happening already. The the fear there taking down Philip's channel is a is a fear thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the whole thing. So yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, as I say, you know, it's a great compliment to Philip that and his courage and his determination that they have chosen to do that. I know it's a, a, a terrible nuisance in another way, but it's a great compliment to him as well. Indeed. But thanks a million, John, anyway, for coming on and, and thanks for your time. And Patricia, probably yeah, to say goodbye yeah, to you Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank thanks, you, John. You're absolute legend. Thanks, thank John. You so much. Bye. Thank you very much, Fanul. Thanks. See you all soon. Thank talk again soon. God bless. Thank you. Take care, John. Take care. Bye.